Hello, and welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. In this podcast, we discuss mystical works of literature and how they relate to recovery. We hope you enjoy today's podcast episode. Hello, this is Buddy C. Welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. If you're just tuning into our podcast, we take, the intro says mystic works of literature, mostly Taoist works, and mostly the Tao Te Ching, if you've never heard of the Tao Te Ching. If you live, if you were raised in the East, rather than the, if you're, say, if you're in the U.S., here, most of us are raised with a Bible in the house. If it's no more than the one on the dining, the little end table or the the little, Ron, what do you call it? The little table that's out in the middle of, that's in front of the couch. Coffee table. Coffee table. The big family Bible on the coffee table. It's got all the pictures in it. And you, as a kid, you might have some genealogy written in it. It's things like that. Big Bible. It's been the family a long time. Did y'all have one growing up? We did. Mm-hmm. We had, they had all, I remember as a kid looking in the back at all the maps and everything. As a kid, mm-hmm. if you lived in the East, you would have a Tao Te Ching. I don't know if it was on the coffee table or not, but you would know what it was. It was in your house. You, it was a somewhat of a guidance for you. The Tao Te Ching is the second most published manuscript in the world behind the Bible. Lots of different translations. And what we found was that it really relates to the higher power that we talk about in recovery. And for a lot of people, studying the Tao Te Ching bridges that gap that we have sometimes between the God that we were raised with, if we're here in the West, with the doorknob. If you go to recovery, they say your higher power could be a doorknob. I don't get that other than the fact that there's a lot of things about a doorknob that have more power than I have. I can't control a doorknob, that's for sure, no more than pushing the door. These verses of the Tao Te Ching, there's 81 verses, and we found a lot of resonation with what we find in recovery. Um, so today we're going to talk about the 32nd verse. We have a lot of back episodes. If you like what you're hearing, you can go back. You can actually search maybe by topic and pull out some episodes that, might, let's say you were having a problem with acceptance. We've had some talks on acceptance, probably resentment, just a lot of things recovery related that you may be able to go and search and find in some of our back episodes. Also, buddyc.org, there's a lot of things there that could help you. There's resources. I wrote a book. Actually, it was just my interpretation of the Tao Te Ching. You can get a free copy there. Email me from the website and I'll send you a PDF of the book for free or you can go to Amazon and buy it. We do give the book to a lot of institutions. If you know of a nonprofit that provides books for institutions or some way I can get into more institutions or know of any, send them to me and I'll add them to my list. I've got six or eight that I send books to whenever they're needed. So we've got that going on. If you look at the website, buddyc.org, top, there's a sign up uh, for a daily Tao devotion. I'm taking what we're reading here and putting it into palatable bites as a daily devotion. And I'm using that as a discipline for me to write. So they're not, they've not been to the editor. So there you'll find some things not correct. You'll find, Oh, he missed this here or missed that there. Trust me. I catch every one. It's amazing how you can sit Brian and read something and say, okay, that's good. And then read it later and the things you miss, I I just don't understand it. But that's why we need editors. So I'll send all of these to my editor once we, I feel that they're ready. And then we'll publish them in like a daily reflections book. But the email will always be free. We'll always have that free. And we've got almost 300 folks on that now, which amazes me. But if you got any feedback for me, please send it. We just want to share what we've learned while our experience, strength, and hope how our life has changed. Uh, and it I will tell you, recovery has worked in my life. 
I have been able to let go of a lot of fear through the 12 step process, which I still work on an ongoing basis. And it works for anything if I will allow it. It all comes back to that surrender, that letting go. And the Tao Te Ching talks so much about letting go. Probably any quote you've ever heard about letting go, say, ooh, that sounds nice. That probably came from the Tao Te Ching. Lots of stuff here. Lots of stuff. Glad to have Brian with me today. It's just me and Brian today. We meet every Saturday morning at 9 p.m. Eastern. We have people come and go. Sometimes we have a whole house full, and sometimes we just have a couple or one. And this is one of those days, so we're going to see what kind of conversation we have today. So, Brian, thanks for being with me, my friend. You're hosting. Buddy, you may go ahead. Yes, Yes, please. You may may start with the uh, Daddy Ching in Clear English from Jeff Pepper. Yes, sir. And uh, All right. It says, Tao is forever nameless. Even though it's simple and small in this world, it can't be conquered. If lords and kings could maintain it, the 10,000 creatures would submit. Heaven and earth would join together, and sweet dew would fall. No citizens would force this, but it would naturally be in harmony. In the beginning, it had a name. Having a name, men would know when to stop. Knowing when to stop, they avoid danger. Down this world is like a stream in the valley, flowing into a river into the sea. Any comments? Well, he said something about, back that up, in the middle, mm-hmm. there about if the rulers, what was that? Something if the rulers see. contained it. Let's see. You talking about no citizens? Oh, if lords and kings could maintain it, 10,000 creatures would submit. Okay. Heaven and earth would join together and sweet dew would fall. The 10,000 creatures means everything. In these writings, when you see 10,000, it means yep, everything. Oh. Hmm. That's good. Let's uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, sometimes this Jeff Pepper, there's not a, lot of, not a lot of meat there. They're all that way, aren't they? Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Do, and some are more. You, you've got ones like Stephen Mitchell's translation. And guys, any yeah. book? talk about you can go to buddyc.org look under resources and we should have all these books in our bookstore there's for some easy links over to amazon Stephen mitchell i get a whole lot out of because in knowing his history he was a soto zen practitioner for many years he still practices soto zen i I think Uh, he studied under a teacher that he studied with for I think seven years after he got out of college, meditating 18 hours a day kind of thing, like very intense practice. And the way he takes the Tao Te Ching, uh, he doesn't uh, stay strictly with the text. He will take some literary license, and that seems to work for him. So sometimes you'll see things that may not appear like in some of the other texts and MacDonald does a pretty literal. We put a link in the note notes for each of these episodes of an online uh, uh, version that you can go to that has multiple different translations. And I keep five up on mine, Guy Fu Fang, Stephen Mitchell, Derek Lynn, J.H. MacDonald and Ron Hogan. Those are the ones that, I look like look at when we're reading, buddy. I I, I like the Derek Lynn because it, it it's the doubt even Da Ching annotated and explained. And I like he has some comments. One thing I find interesting is he used the same the same word sweet dew, and it says sweet dew is a metaphor for good fortune. Raining sweet dew means an abundance of good fortune. When we hold on to the Tao, everything seems to fall into place. Plans progress smoothly. People come to our aid, and things somehow work out in our favor more often than not. The first word that comes up to me is surrender. It's like we always end up back there and not forcing. That's what it's about, Brian, is 
letting go and just stepping out of the way. It's not so much we have to accomplish like in recovery. I tried for years thinking God helped me. It was up to me to do everything I could possibly do. And then God would do that little bit to push me over. That I don't know why yeah. I thought that way. Yeah. That's how I thought. But in recovery with five years of struggling, it took me six years to get a year uh, in and out. I finally just surrendered and said, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to end up committing suicide, quite honestly. And then once I quit trying, it started working. I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't, immediately it lifted, immediately. It's that, it's that round hole square peg, bigger hammer. It's that it can't be done for me as long as I'm trying to do it. It's like this thing needs to be moved, and as long as I'm in the way, it can't, I can't get help for it. I, I'm thinking of some of the four. God, love, whatever one you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll just say God. I use that term loosely. Is behind me, and I say that my alcoholism's in front of me, and it's this big square box turned diagonally that I can't push. It's just odd. But you know, you've had one of those before. <laughs> <laughs> a few. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And it's about the size of a condensing unit. Like something, I just can't get it. And I'm trying and trying every way I can. And it just sits there and spins and rolls and it just, I can't get nowhere. Uh, And I think what God, I thought God helping me would be just pushing me with it. Just, and what I realized was the program (laughs) doesn't add help to what I'm doing. The program teaches me how to step out of the way and allow it to be moved for me. Well, that's been my experience. And that doesn't mean I don't have anything to do with it, but my job, it's much harder for me to work to let go, which is what I'm talking about, and surrender and accept and be in this moment. And it's a step past acceptance. Mm -hmm. Acceptance would be, it's okay for you to have a different opinion from than me. Uh, Surrender is letting go of my opinion. Yeah. That's different. I was just going to say, you was talking about moving the box. For me, it, I could get into my head. I'm going to, this box needs to be shoved into the corner. And I just shove and shove. And, but if I just pump the brakes and sometimes even leave it alone for a day or two, it'll come to me that putting that box in the corner is a bad idea because then I can't get it back out. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's just, if, if I just, if I start feeling that resistance, if I'll just let go of it and say, it's going to be okay. That's the real uh, key for me was that my whole problem was that resistance. And that's part of the letting go. Anything I resist persists. It persists if I resist it. <laughs> With my alcoholism, I was resisting it. No. And when I finally just, I'm powerless, I can't do this anymore. And I just quit trying. The moment I quit trying, it lifted and there was a strength there that was not my own. And you really can't describe it. You've got to experience it. It's like the tasting of the strawberry. Strawberry, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Strawberry taste, but you can experience it. You can experience it. And program teaches me tools to get out of the way. The big tool for me to get out of the way is to help someone else that's struggling with the same thing. So let's say, Brian, that, okay, we were both struggling with letting go, and I I knew it. I, I would pray for Brian. I would send Brian love. Even if I didn't believe in God, we get a lot of people through here that have, even if you're atheist, if you will start doing for others, you will feel better. Don't you feel better when you do something for someone? That's why it's the Christmas spirit. It's the only time of the year a lot of these folks ever think about someone other than themselves. That's the Christmas spirit. We experience that all year. Yeah. That's why. It's because we feel good when we do things for someone else. Yeah. And it gets me out of cell. 
See, the self's the problem there, Brian, is because I think I can do this. And when I can't, I don't know what to do because that's all I've ever done all my life. Mm. Work harder, do better, double down, more, more, yeah. more, more of every. Just if that's not enough, let's just do more. Whatever. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Bigger hammer. Hit the bigger hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so much of my stuff, I, I grew up in church and there was some physical abuse there. And it left me really angry at God thinking, but, and, and I can remember being in church and seeing there was always that person there that was like, on the outside, like life was perfect when they're just like, God is good every day. And that just left me so twisted and confused and angry. And that's where I picked up this Tao Te Ching stuff. It's been really, it's really been the spiritual component that, that I've been missing. My higher power, I'm still developing that, but I could look back and realize that we'd call it God, that God was saving me from myself. And that's what I shared in a meeting a couple of weeks ago. I said, there's been some times that if, if I would have got my way, I would have really created some big messes. And and I didn't, thankfully. How many times in life have we been in situations that we thought were horrible that ended up being good? In situations that were good that ended up being horrible. Yeah. Which happened yeah. time and time again because I don't have the ability to gauge how a situation is going to affect my life. I just don't know. Yeah. This was, uh, this is a big book quote from page 420 in the third edition. This goes along with getting out of the way. Mm -hmm. Acceptance is the key to my relationship with God today. I never just sit and do nothing while waiting on him to tell me what to do. Rather, I do whatever's in front of me to be done, and I leave the results up to him. However it turns out, that's God's will for me. I must keep my magic magnifying mind on my acceptance and off my expectations. For my serenity is directly proportional to my level of acceptance. When I remember this, I can see I've never had it so good. Thank God for AA. AA. AA is not the only way, but the principles of AA are like a shortcut. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of my Zen friends are getting to the same place. Actually, mm -hmm. some of my favorite acceptance tools I've taught, talked about before, I learned from my Zen friends. Mm -hmm. Thank you for everything. I have no complaints. No complaints. I would not change whatever, even if I could. Yeah. Was <laughs> First time I heard you. First time I heard those, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the hell? Why, what's he talking about? And yeah. You know, where it really came in was when my son died, and I would not change his medical condition while he, he was sick about a month. I would not change his medical condition even if I could. Of course I would. And as time went on and I worked with that over and over, that angst and that, all of that emotion left and kept leaving it and kept diminishing. Because every time I said that, it was like I was trusting a little more, letting go a little more really was what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I've, and, I've heard you share about that several times and there's some powerful stuff. Yeah, I just hope. I just know that's being used, and I I want to do everything I can to help others that have been in the same predicament. <laughs> they always say that no parent should bury their children. Well, they do. Yeah. A lot of us in recovery have to deal with that, and another great thing in recovery is we have tools that the others don't. Yeah. Well, his mom didn't have those tools. I, I helped his sister with some of them at the very first. I told her to pray for her mother when she thought about it and or pray for her, his grandmother who and grandfather who's still alive on both sides. Yeah. Pray for them. 
when you're feeling down, pray for them. Just have a good cry. Just let it out. Don't depress it. Don't suppress yeah. emotion. Mm-hmm. It's been a big learning for me, and I hope that it. And I've shared it on several podcasts. And if you want to hear my story, just Google Buddy C A A, and it'll pop up several places. And a couple of those, especially the most, the more recent ones, I have talked about that in detail. Yeah. Let's read Stephen Mitchell. See what he says. He starts out with the Tao cannot be perceived off the top. It cannot be perceived. I think that's a mental perception. We can't mentally. And and a lot of this idea, Brian, is not only letting go physically of the things going on in our life, but letting go of the need to know, need to understand. Because that need of it to understand is what gets us in trouble. We can't just let go and go with the flow and go with what's in front of us to do. The, the man of Tao stands on what is already moving, moving, which is incredible. Because if you can just sit and notice and be aware of what's happening, you can see what's next. That that's, next right indicating step. Yes, actually. Like in, in recovery, that's what they call it, the next right move, right? Mm-hmm. Smaller than an electron, it contains uncountable galaxies. If powerful men and women could remain centered in the Tao, all things would be in harmony. The world would become a paradise. That's the the same as what you're talking about from Derek. The sweet dude. Yes. All people would be at peace and the law would be written in their hearts. When you have names and forms, know that they are provisional. Names and forms are not the real thing. In other words, there's something more than the name and the form. When you have institutions, know that their functions should end. Talking about that stop thinking and end your problems. Yep. Craig's mantra. Yeah. I've been on his behind about not showing up. He's worried. He's, you did it at a time that I couldn't come. And I said, <laughs> I said, we, Saturday morning, it's like afternoon in Scott, Ireland, Scotland, wherever you're at. Why are you, what? I, I was going to say, I, I heard him on uh, Transitions Daily. Yeah, he's Transitions. And, uh, yeah, and uh, so made me think about him. Yeah, for those of you guys that would like to get a daily reader that in your email that has, I think, all of the daily AA readers that we normally read, Daily Reflections, as Bill sees it, 24 hours. All of those, you can sign up at transitionsdaily.org, and it's free. Over 20,000, 22,000 emails go out every day at this point, adding probably five to seven a day. So it's a good resource, and your email is never shared with anyone for any reason. No one knows. That's all kept, you know, private. Enjoy the podcast or the recordings of it. Yeah, what we do is... We've taken all of the, or they have taken all of the daily emails, not added any commentary, and read them. And then those are published every day as a podcast. And there's folks from all over the world that have read. I have read some Texas, Scotland, England. Um, I can't think of all the different places that we've had. New Mexico. We've had a lot of folks, a lot of folks read. Our lady now that's doing the cleanup ones, the ones that have bad recordings after be re- redone, mm-hmm. is the lady in Scotland that does it. That she's doing, Kate, she's doing our ones. And we've got a guy in uh, Canada that is responsible for editing now. And we've got a guy in Brazil that uploads them all into the aggregators. So we've got people all over the world that are helping with transitions. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it? It is. But that's how it works, isn't it? We all do our part. Oh, when, okay, institutions know their function should end. Okay, this is what we're talking about right here. Mm -hmm. Knowing when to stop, you can't avoid any danger. All things end in the Tao as rivers flow into the sea. Knowing when to stop. Knowing when to let go. Because if I'm grasping that, let's say I'm in the, 
waist deep in the river and something's coming down the river. This is the way I like to think about it. There's something I need metaphorically that's floating down the Mm -hmm. river. I grab it when it comes by. Now, when I grab it, when it's right where I am, it's, I'm not really doing anything to hold on to it. I'm, I can hold it with my flat hands, but as Mm -hmm. it goes by me, if I don't want to let it go, man, I have to start exerting some force to hold on Mm -hmm. if the river's pulling it. Now, there's a new thing coming. I can't enjoy it while I've got, I'm holding on to this. It's going to go right by me. So I have to let go of what I have to grasp the new thing. Which is scary. It is. It's vulnerable, that time. Vulnerability. Letting go of that old and grasping what is new. Mm -hmm. When everything has a season and letting things die and grieving the loss, we grieve a lot of losses that are not grieving human beings. Mm -hmm. Everything in our life that we have stopped or failed or even succeeded in so whatever, uh, we have to grieve those things. We have to let those Mm -hmm. things go. Mm -hmm. We don't watch it. We'll hold on to things that happened. Gosh, when we were kids that we haven't let go yet, that's preventing us from grasping the new. Mm -hmm. The tools in recovery are so great with that, though. We identify our fears, which most, I think all of it has a base of fear. All of our mm-hmm. effects, all those things we hold yeah. on to. It's some yeah. Kind of- yeah. Yeah. You, you start drilling down into it. It's like that first question is, what are you afraid of? Isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> and on the outside looking in, you're like, I'm not afraid of anything. And then you start. Yeah, I am. That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. Realize, Brian, as you work through those things, that you probably have one or two fears that are behind everything. Mm -hmm. For me, your financial insecurity was part of that. It still is. I still have to surrender that one a little. It's not as massive as it used to be, but it's much smaller. Yeah. And then... Fear of acceptance of others, people pleasing. I always, I still am very sensitive to what other people think about me on any level. Used to, I would fight that with diminishing them in some way, comparing, contrasting, and then attacking. If I didn't do it outright, I it was in my head, oh, you know, this is why they're not as good as I am, blah, 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 whatever. For for me, I throw up a wall and say, "I don't, I don't give a shit what they think." Yeah, we really do. If you're saying yes. I don't give a shit, yeah. that you give a shit. Yeah, that's it. You wouldn't be saying it at all. Yeah, so, whatever. <laughs> Busted again. <laughs> what I've learned now is that okay, it really doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Uh, and I've learned to laugh at some of that. Now, sometimes I don't. Uh, someone thought the other day I was a lot older than I am. And man, that hurt my feelings. I stewed over that for several days. I finally had to start letting that one go. But just little things, Brian, that I'm, they were, they didn't mean nothing by that. They were kidding me, actually. And uh, if they knew that really bothered me, they wouldn't have said that. Uh, yeah. Was I friends and AA friends? That yeah, I don't know super well, but I go to meetings with them regularly. And I was like, oh, do they, gosh, they think I'm that old? That just hurt my feelings. And then, I, okay, when I'm worked on getting a little more acceptance, I, it's those little, what do they say, the little foxes spoil the vine. So, I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a Bible quote. We let these little things eat at us. We don't let them end. If we want to put it back to this 32nd verse, all yeah. the end in the Tao. Yeah. Saying you could, the Tao, T A O, is the path. The Tao Te Ching, Tao, T A O, is the path. De, T E, is virtue. Ching is book. So it would be the book of the path of virtue or the way of virtue. So this is saying all things end back into the path. Would that be the same as every step is on the path, that there are no mistakes, that everything works 
into something good. I think it would be that same idea. Maybe I'm reading more in that than I should, but mm-hmm. that makes sense to me because I don't think it's that that there's a puppeteer that's got all this planned and arranged. It's not like the Presbyterian idea of predestination where the Presbyterian falls down the steps and he says, whew, I'm glad that's over with. I don't think it's like that. <laughs> but I think it could be like Romans 8 in the message version, Romans eight twenty eight, that every detail of our lives of love work into something good. Mm-hmm. So just like water, if we want to go back to a natural example, just like water is always pulled by gravity. Always, it'll always run downhill unless there's some external force that's making it not to. But under normal circumstances, every time you pour out that glass of water, it's going to run downhill every time. Yep. Without exception. So in the same way, every detail of our lives are going to work into something good. Every detail is going to eventually work into something good. Think in your life backwards. I see a straight line from one thing to I thought I was bouncing all over the place. How could this be? This is such a cluster. This is so bad. This is, but I have, I am grateful now more for my, my failures than my successes because I learned more from my failures. I see more positive change in my life from my failure and difficult circumstances I, I have learned from. And for me, that's the case. And some people, it may not be that way, but I've seen good come out of some very bad things. And that's the way I could justify someone say, how could there be a God if they let this happen? Maybe life is just life. And if we learn a way to get compassion, which God is love, if God is love and we learn how to get compassion into a relationship, it turns it to something good. Not that. God orchestrated this thing to happen. Maybe it's just that's life. Rain falls on the just and the unjust. Yeah. Why not? If I'm getting compassion into that, and that's what we learn in recovery, that there's nothing that helps al- alcoholics so much as someone. Oh, let me read it. That's the first of working with others. Working with others, yeah. Hold on just a second for me. Practical experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. It works when other activities fail. That's page 89 in the big book. It doesn't say start helping folks when you have three years of sobriety. It's time for you to start helping people. No. It says when you're wanting to drink, when you're craving whatever your substance is, Go to a meeting, pray for all those people that are in that meeting. And after the meeting, you may not want to use or drink. Just try it next time. Before you go get a drink or drug, go to a meeting or go online. There's meetings online 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Pray for each square what you would want for you with your recovery. Then when you're out in the world and it starts happening, maybe you could just Put one of those in mind and pray for them at that moment that they'd have what you want. Or even even pick up the phone or send somebody a text and say, you came to mind. How are you doing? That's a great listen. Yeah. When you get involved, Brian, in recovery, you realize you start making these friends you can contact. You get a spot. I'd suggest everyone have a sponsor that can just guide you on the path. Because that's what the sponsor does. The sponsor Mm -hmm. shows the path he has walked already. That's a caddy on the course. Yes. That's what my sponsor says. He says, I'm just a caddy. (laughs) (laughs) I don't play golf, so I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have come up with that. But yeah, it's just, it's here for us. And that's interesting that all things end in the Tao. So we Mm -hmm. can, that all things end in love. Yep. If we yeah. because it would be the same thing as rivers flow into the sea. It's not as if it ends into a brick wall. When this yeah. is over, it's over. No river flows into a sea. It becomes part of the sea. It doesn't really end. So there's, if that makes sense, I, I've never seen this before. I, that that's 
really good. It's like there's a, there's the other verse. I don't remember which one it is. It talks about the valley. Yes. And that water always flows down to the lowest point. It, it goes to the places that men dare not go. Mm-hmm. The reason the ocean, the bigger the body of water, the lower elevation. Mm-hmm. And the bigger the body of water, the more it gives back through, uh, what's it called? <laughs> we used to get, kid Craig about the, uh, Yeah. I know there was, was it water cycle? You know, through the water cycle, yes. There was something, yeah. like the hydrologic. Yeah. Feels- <laughs> <laughs> through the water cycle, it vaporizes and condenses and we get rain and it just cycles over and over again and the larger the body the more it gives back to the world mm-hmm. it's, it's not the creek flowing in to the pond it's the river flowing into the sea so it's the largest body that's what happens when things end that are in the Dow they are, they just go in with everything else and then reused by the whole world mm-hmm. for its highest and best use is what I like to use that's what one, oh, go ahead. Well, one of my friends in recovery told me to uh, do with my son's death, pray that it be used for its highest and best use. And that, that, that helped during yeah. the, been two and a half years now, but, and it still comes up at times. And I, I imagine it always will. Oh, go ahead, Brian. I was, I was just thinking about the yin and the yang and I was reading about that and it was talking about, you got the white. And then you got the black, and it's the, this is the good, but there's bad in the good. And then the exact opposite. There's bad, but there's good in the bad. And I say labeling good, but it's, it's all part of a, it's all part of a cycle a flow. I was reading Derek Lynn's comments here. It says, the line is a recurring image of the Dow Day Ching. Streams in a valley flow together to form rivers and eventually pour into the ocean. This can represent all things re- returning to the Tao. It can also represent how we resonate powerfully with the Tao and so gravitate towards it. In this chapter, it points to how naturally everything comes together for you when you are on the path of cultivation. Yes. Preach it, Mr. Lynn. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. When you're on the, to me, it's when you're on the path of surrender and acceptance. Yeah. That, that's really how I may stay on that path. So, thank you for everything. I have no complaints whatsoever. That story was from Sono. I actually learned that story from a Stephen Mitchell book. Really? That story I got from a Stephen Mitchell, uh, which was a Buddhist teacher named Sono back hundreds of years ago. And a a man came to her that had a problem with anger. And she told him, said, for the next year, every time you're angry, I want you to say, thank you for everything. I have no complaint whatsoever. Every time. And reluctantly, he said, okay, I'll do it. I'll try. He came back a year later. He said, everything's insane. No one's changed. I still get angry about everything. She said, thank you for everything. I have no complaint whatsoever. And it hit him what she was talking about. It was about him changing, not everything else changing to please Mm -hmm. him. That thank you for something that you don't feel grateful for helps you to let it go. Yeah. Hearing that junk around and trying to make everybody fit your junk. Yeah. That's Michael Singer talked about that in his podcast. It's really incredible. I'd suggest everyone look up his latest podcast. It says we carry around this junk, and what we try to do, we like something when it fits our junk. We don't like it when it doesn't. So why don't we just get rid of the junk? Then that yeah. way we want. I have that that quote in my uh, calendar on my phone, and it, it pops up twice a day. Uh-huh. So I, I have it set as an appointment at 430 so when I get up in the mornings, there it is on my phone. And then I think I have it at maybe three. Because I'm because usually by then I'm needing another dose. I, yeah. I don't talk about it much, but yeah, I have all kinds of affirmations in my calendar. <laughs> they yeah. pop up at different times. I have one for each day that 
I just go crazy with it. But, My yeah. wife has some of that. I, I told her about some of your signs that you had, I think, on your office wall that one of them was, I don't know. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> but, I, I, I called it the wall of Dow. That's what the wall of Dow. My other house, I had all, I had a whole wall of stuff. My wife walked in and she just shook her head, walked out. <laughs> she didn't even ask. Yeah. But it was all those my, my wife's in recovery as well. And there's times I'll stop. I'll stop and I'll just say, I I don't know. So I'm just going to back my way out of this. <laughs> start this day over again, please. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Man, I appreciate you showing up today. We had a good conversation. Yeah. 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 I'm glad. To, I'm glad to be here. Appreciate Anything else you. you. Want to add, Brian? I, I can't think of anything. I, I think it's been a it's been a good conversation. It's been good for my soul, man. It's what I needed. That thirty second verse in uh, Stephen Mitchell starts with the Tao cannot be perceived, and ends with knowing when to stop. You can avoid any danger. All things end in the Tao as rivers flow into the sea. It's not. Knowing when to stop. Knowing when to stop. You can avoid any danger. All things end in the Tao as rivers flow into the sea. Wow. That's, that's in line with 31 last week where it talks about when war. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing when to stop. Isn't it all about, well, it's all about knowing when to stop. Stopping is letting go. Knowing yeah. when to let go. There's another phrase that says, the master does his work, then he lets go, and letting go, he makes it stay. Mm -hmm. so he stops resisting, stops fighting, stops clinging, and that's really what makes it a value, whatever it is that he's doing. How many mm -hmm. times have you seen, I've seen in recovery, someone have some good idea or something, and they won't let it go. They just keep picking at it picking, picking, or a business or anything, and just take your hands off some time is really the answer. Just let it go. Step back. See what happens. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, my friend, for being. Absolutely. Me. We enjoyed it. That was a good conversation. You have a great week and hope to see you next week. Hello, this is Buddy C. I wanted to make you aware of several recovery-related resources that I've posted in the episode description. These resources include a list of recovery podcasts, a free sober meditation app, daily recovery email, shared Google recovery calendars. Hope you put some of these resources to use and have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends in recovery. 